the sparring videos of the baddest man on the planet and his upcoming opponent, Jake Paul, have been leaked, and it is definitely not the outcome you expect. Mike Tyson was the center of attraction for boxing in the 80s and 90s with his prowess in the boxing ring, but he's attracted more attention even two decades after his retirement. And it's not just for his sharpness in the ring, even his training and sparring sessions are becoming topics of discussion everywhere. In the leaked sparring session, he's seen in the ring against Jake Paul, his next opponent, and the run of events has surprised those that have chanced upon it. From the sparring between both fighters, so much seems to have changed in the build-up to the match on July 20th. Let's dive right in. It's no news that one of the greatest boxing legends and former world heavyweight champion, Michael Gerard Tyson, is showing up on our screens once again. So you got to make it because you know what? I'm looking jab. So if I be jabbed, you gonna try to get me to Not as a corner man, but as a heavyweight boxer. The baddest man on the planet is hopping in the ring and about against Jake Paul, the problem child, on the 20th of July 2024. And with every step taken in the build-up, the world of boxing is being thrown into a series of controversies and speculations. While some spot and highlight the wide age difference between the two as the most decisive factor in the match, others are centering their thoughts and predictions around Mike Tyson's experience and boxing abilities. To them, Mike Tyson is ageless and as terrifying and fierce as he was 30 years ago in his prime. Professional boxers and commentators have been asked to give their two cents on the prediction, and they've lined equally on both sides of the fence. There have been different opinions and speculations as regards this bout. In a recent talk session, the former world heavyweight champion was asked about his upcoming match with Jake, and when he responded, he did so without a glitch of certainty or confidence. I'm very much looking forward to stepping into the ring with Jake Paul. He has grown significantly as a boxer over the years, so it'll be a lot of fun to see what the will and ambition of a kid can do with the experience and aptitude of a goat. I kicked off his boxing journey on the undercard of my fight with Roy Jones, and now I plan to finish him. That's not so much of a big deal and not an overstatement coming from the former undisputed world heavyweight champion of boxing, who won his first 19 professional fights by knockout, 12 of them in the first round. It's no news their sparring sessions have been causing rounds of uproar and divided speculations, with some fans highlighting the noticeable growth in Jake Paul as he honed his skills and worked on becoming more adept in facing both older and younger opponents, making reference to the popular matchup against Tommy Fury. It was a very tight match that could almost have gone either way. Judging from that performance, Jake Paul solidified his feet in the world of boxing. Though not carried away by Paul's recent bouts, where he had consecutive first-round knockouts, he deserves all the accolades he can get. And from the most recent sparring sessions between them, one thing is noticeable about Jake Paul, his aggression. Though Paul is also known to be a heavy puncher for his division, he seemed to be working majorly on his aggression and innate gift of Mike Tyson. Paul, like Mike Tyson, had knockout victories in his first set of matches as a boxer, and when Paul was going to see out a match, he did so in some impressive fashion. He had 71 shots compared to his opponent's 52, and most significantly, he had 35 power shots in the matchup. To an extent, one can't underestimate Jake Paul's aggression and hits in the ring. He's just no match to the man who ended Michael Spinks in just 91 seconds in the World Heavyweight Championship. However, one reminder that has been sent to the boxing world from the likes of the golden boy of boxing, Oscar de la Hoya, Dana White, and some others is that the Tyson that did all of those is no longer in existence. In their books, he became extinct some two decades ago. in the leaked sparring session between them, Jake Paul was seen aiming at taking advantage of Mike's strengths. Sometimes when you want to kill a killer, you kill him with his weapons. Using his style, relentlessly and carelessly, Jake Paul attempted hitting Tyson with his best punches, hoping to master the art of using his aggression as an advantage. But in Mike's training session, Mike did something that has come as a huge surprise to everyone. Like in a perfect contrast to Jake Paul's style of boxing. So, 
You gonna try to get that right Mike Tyson was seen painstakingly aiming at his target, carefully planning every one of his punches. Nothing confirms Iron Mike's versatility more than this. Tyson carefully dished out his punches at Paul and made an attempt to escape a counter. So while Jake Paul worked on his aggression to ensure he had the better part of Tyson, Tyson has chosen to work on a more important aspect of his game, to remain the all-encompassing fighter he's always been known to be. But Jake Paul didn't stop there. It wasn't just about his aggression. Jake Paul, in recent times, has decided to go beyond the training and advice of his trainer, Benjamin Flores. Jake Paul has been seen training with Evander Holyfield in a video that blew up the internet, and Jake Paul was seen working on the exact techniques that he was taught by Evander Holyfield. Well, that struck some chords and passed some messages as well. Holyfield remains one of the six people to defeat Mike Tyson in his rich boxing career of 58 matches. And with Jake Paul employing the help of Holyfield, he may just be looking to beat the best by learning from those who beat the best. With the help of Holyfield, Jake Paul is looking to deploy the same tactics and techniques that earned Evander Holyfield a famous victory over Mike Tyson, only that there may not be a bite in the aftermath of this. The problem child could be seen constantly concentrating and eager to learn as Evander was seen giving appropriate moves and pointing out possible open areas while in defense. This exactly was practiced by Jake Paul in the sparring session with Mike Tyson. He wasn't only showing Tyson that he's mastered aggressiveness. When asked about Jake Paul's abilities in the ring after their sparring sessions, Holyfield had this to say, yeah, Paul's got magical punches too for his category. I know many folks pay attention to only the heavyweight guys for the weight of their punches, but trust me, for his size, this guy's a handful. And he's not just a handful in his punches, you have to give it to him for his swiftness. The ability he has to carry himself and give swift responses when needed is going to put him on the books, even when he moves to higher divisions. I know he'll remain the same. He has a decent record of knockouts too, and that's not an accident. Then Holyfield warned those who paid no attention to Paul for the sake of his reputation for fighting only older men. We shouldn't be carried away by the claims that he's a YouTuber who doesn't duel real boxers. He's fought three or so with boxers, and he's seen one out and knocked two out in the first round. He's doing great, but it wouldn't end just that way. The training session between Evander Holyfield and Jake Paul sparked up fan speculations and quotes referring to the fact that the former undisputed welterweight and heavyweight champion, who took on Tyson and defeated him twice in the ring, was training Tyson's latest opponent. A fan said on Twitter, Jake isn't joking in this sparring. This isn't Ryan Borland. Even if Ally resurrects to train you, you're losing this. The fight between Jake and Ryan Borland ended in an embarrassing loss for Borland. Jake Paul scored a first-round TKO, battering Ryan Borland before the referee called the fight at 237 in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Paul improved to 9-1 to with 6 KOs while stopping his opponent in the first round in a second consecutive fight. Borland, at 35 years of age, fell to 17-3. During the match, Borland fired first, a jab that missed. Jake countered with his own jabs, but Borland showed no hesitancy. Jake connected with a right hand to the body, but Borland was still moving forward. Jake then threw his punches toward Borland's body again, while Borland was still coming straight into a couple of Jake's jabs. Jake landed a big right, and Borland began wobbling as a result. Then Jake started winding up. He was showboating and unloading. Borland tried so hard to survive, but Jake landed more big blows. Before Borland could pick himself up, it was over. The referee called it off point when other fans saw Jake Paul training with Evander Holyfield and said, Jake, by July 20th, you'll show the world that you're a Trevor Burbick reincarnate. Talking about this, Trevor Burbick gave Mike Tyson one of his most memorable knockout victories. It was a preordained beating, a historic moment waiting to happen, in the beginning of a new era. Mike Tyson stopped Trevor Burbick to become heavyweight champion. A 20-year-old starting a demolishing unbeaten Tyson became an overnight sensation, scoring knockout after knockout in highlight reel fashion. It was only a matter of time until Tyson managed to claim a title. The moment came in late 1986. The US moment came when Burbick, the WBC champion, 
who had defeated Muhammad Ali in Ali's last bout, was coming off a narrow points win over Pinklon Thomas in his title-clinching effort. Burbick was no match for the then superbly trained and confident Tyson. Barely out of his teens but looking every bit the force of nature he would become, Tyson was 27-0 with 25 knockouts and had a 12-0 run that year alone. He was the ample favorite on November 22, 1986, when he climbed into the ring wearing his customary white towel and black trunks and shoes. It didn't take long to realize that the 32-year-old Burbick had no chance. After winning round one with his stone-cold stare during the pre-fight instructions, Tyson went to work from the very first second of the fight, progressively laying a beating on Burbick and almost sending him to the canvas in a dramatic ending of the first round in which Tyson landed an unanswered four-punch combo that staggered the champion. That was just the start. Tyson dropped Burbick with the first serious punch he threw in the next round. And that was the beginning of the end. Barely able to defend himself against Tyson's furious onslaughts, Burbick held on for dear life throughout the round, drawing numerous warnings from the referee. Until he was dropped towards the end of the second round by a combination capped by a left hook that sent Burbick to the canvas. The champ clownishly attempted to make his stiff legs carry him to an upright position but failed in two attempts, and referee Mills Lane stopped the carnage at the 2.35 mark on seeing the sparring session with Holyfield. Another fan quipped, Pinklon Thomas will do better than you. For Pinklon, the famous night was the night of May 30, 1987 as Tyson defended the WBA and WBC versions of the heavyweight championship at the Las Vegas Hilton Outdoor Arena. Tyson had won the WBA belt in a largely dull 12-round victory just two months earlier over James Bonecrusher Smith. That's where the dynamic WBC champ had struggled, with Smith repeatedly grabbing and holding him every time he got close. Still, Tyson landed far more of the clean punches over the 12 rounds, and there was no dispute that he deserved the decision. However, questions were now arising as to whether the 21-year-old Tyson was going to ascend to heights where Larry Holmes and Muhammad Ali had been before him. Those two iconic names had essentially defined the heavyweight championship in terms of number of title wins and defenses in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And in this fight with the January 1st, 29-year-old Thomas, Tyson reasserted his tremendous hand speed and power for all to see. Finally, after a lengthy delay at the end of the fifth round, where Thomas needed a new left glove put on because his original one was damaged, Tyson moved in for the kill. Just a minute into the sixth round, he rocked Thomas again with an uppercut. This time, Tyson followed with several rights and lefts as Thomas wobbled around the middle of the ring, unable to grab him or fire back. Tyson finally landed a solid right, and with Thomas's guard down at his waist, a booming left sent him spilling over his left side and onto his back. Legendary referee Carlos Padilla administered a count, but it wasn't necessary as Thomas didn't beat it, and Thomas's Hall of Fame trainer for the fight, Angelo Dundee, had already jumped into the ring to make sure the fight would be stopped. The victory pushed Tyson's record at that time to 30-0 with 27 knockouts, and just two months later, Iron Mike was back in the ring, wiping out Tony Tucker over 12 rounds to capture the IBF version of the title. Thus, he became the first undisputed heavyweight champion since Ali held all of the belts in the 1970s. Tyson would go on to defend the undisputed championship six more times, including a brutal KO of Holmes in January 1988. However, his seemingly unstoppable career got derailed in February 1990, when Buster Douglas pulled arguably the greatest upset in the history of boxing, knocking Tyson out in the 10th round in Tokyo, Japan. I in the sparring session. Mike seemed to work more on his defense than attack. He hid the most ferocious part of himself and saved it for July 20th. While it's a sparring session and there aren't really winners, 
Tyson defended more while Jake unleashed his attack. Tyson's defense was just good enough to downplay the effectiveness of Jake's punches. When Tyson attacks in the matchup, it can only be hoped that Jake neutralizes his punches. While Tyson has mostly been on the receiving end of countless accolades, Paul has also had his fair share of impressive victories. Paul's first fight was against YouTube star Ines and Gibb, who actually had boxing experience thanks to two amateur bouts, but Paul was able to knock him out convincingly. His second and third fights went the same way, and even when Paul wasn't winning by knockout, his hard punches were a major force that ensured he delivered a significant blow to his opponents. Only a few world-class boxers, like the one Jake Paul will be facing on the 20th of July, have the ability to deliver such damaging blows in the ring. Jake Paul also has a talent for the lead hand hook, which was noticeable from his very first fight. Before his last fight against Ryan Borland, he gave his supporters a sublime performance that got many talking. It was Jake Paul's lowest key fight to date, as he continued his quest to become a legitimate boxer when he faced Andre August, a multi-time Golden Gloves winner. It took less than a minute for Paul to give his fans an early holiday gift. As he knocked out August in the first round, Paul, who lost to Tommy Fury earlier that year, ended 2023 on a high note. The problem child came out to rockin' around the Christmas tree with his brother Logan, the WWE United States Champion. Nobody was sitting down in the packed arena from the opening bell, and all you could see were phones. The time the fight lasted was enough for a simple Snapchat story. Both fighters stayed in the center of the ring to open the fight. It appeared to be Paul's happy place, as he landed dangerous counter shots. August went for a hook, and that was all Paul needed to land a counter right uppercut to take him out. The crowd erupted when Paul got his hand raised. I said first round knockout all week. I manifested it, Paul said. He went night night. I don't know what I proved tonight. I'm just going to do me. He didn't even last two minutes. All I wanted to do was give you a knockout for Christmas. Paul said his next move will be revealed next week. He did mention he wants to face opponents with the skills of August, and money fights are always on the table. It should be noted that rival KSI had a live streamed sparring session, time to clash with Paul's event. However, while some fans cheered on Jake for his promising talents, others had nothing but praise for Mike Tyson, as well as his trainer Rafael Cordero, who is known to be an MMA legend and renowned trainer. Even UFC commentator Joe Rogan was in awe after watching the sparring clip of monstrous Tyson and his coach Rafael Cordero. Rafael is a world-renowned trainer. When you see him holding the mitts for Tyson and Tyson smashing the mitts like, Jesus, that guy can still knock you out. It's not just a match between two boxers. It's a sparring battle as well, and both have proven to be the best in their respective ways. July 20th will reveal the answer. Hit the like and subscribe button, and turn on notifications to keep getting the best updates on the top actions in the world of boxing. Until next time, peace out.